How's your bracket? Happy Monday. Welcome back. We've been on sabbatical for a while because A.J. Hoffman had the camera down at Astro Spring Training. But as you can see, Mr. Ahmad Brooks is back from vacation. Uh, he forgot to bring his bracket with him. That's good. If it looks like mine, there's no reason to bring it. Uh, hope your bracket's doing well, and welcome to the snooze here at LonghornStation.com. Lots of stuff on our plate. We are here to uh, talk about the demise of the Texas women's basketball season. It has come to an end, but we're also here to celebrate March Madness. Five quote-unquote mid-majors have reached the level of the Sweet 16, including three double-digit seeds. What has been the surprise for you more than anything else so far? Kansas going out. Northern Iowa um, and that debacle. And, and I think most people, uh, including myself, I don't know who you had picked to win the tournament, John. I think you said Kansas. Kansas. <laughs> uh, yeah. Them going out in the second round was, was, was a shocker. And, and you've even mentioned that this is the third time a number one seed. Uh, I forgot the stat that you used uh, for Kansas. This is their third time in their history that they've gone down as a number one seed in the second round. Third time for them. That is crazy. Yeah. So it's not. It's something that has happened, but I think anytime you see it, and once again, it, it talks about the beautiful thing of watching March Madness. Now, if you're a Jayhawk fan right now, you don't even want to see March Madness. But if you're anybody else, you're like, this is why you watch. This is why we will be glued to the television set watching Kentucky and Cornell go at it and watching Washington, of course, and St. Mary's and Baylor. Um, seeing those, those guys, the underdog, finally mm -hmm. get a shot at the big boy. It is is just a thing of beauty, and and this is what March Madness is all about, John. And of the teams remaining, I think Kentucky's the strongest, and it'll be no surprise that I think you and I are both anticipating watching this Ivy League school oh, yeah. go up against the most talented team, in my opinion, remaining in the tournament. Or well, what'll happen? I don't know. It, it, it wouldn't surprise me though if Cornell wins. I mean, this is the way the tournament has been going, John, well, thus far. It depends. The the games that are left, I, I do think that has the most intrigue is Kentucky against Cornell. That's the Friday. The the, the late late night game, I guess actually on Thursday. But um I I'll tell you, very interesting clash of styles. Some coaches will tell you they'd rather have talent than experience. Others will tell you you'll go as far as your seniors can take mm -hmm. you. Well Cornell's got eight seniors Correct. in its nine man rotation. Uh, Kentucky is all sophomores and freshmen that didn't play in the tournament last year, so they've got exactly two games under their collective belts. be very interesting to see how this goes. Now, that said, for everybody who thinks this is going to be George Mason redux, mm. remember that George Mason, en route to the Final Four, got past Michigan State, got past North Carolina, so they were ready when it came time to beat UConn in the regional final. Oh. This Cornell team has beaten Temple and Wisconsin. No disrespect, but that ain't Michigan State, North Carolina. <laughs> so we'll see how much Cornell has. But I think that's probably the most intrigue. As far as the Texas women's season uh, coming to an end, mm -hmm. just very frustrating. Uh, the men missed a lot of layups and dunks when they lost to Wake Forest. The women lost a significant number of layups last night. Sometimes there's just a little in the basket. Things just don't go your way. And and. March Madness comes down to chemistry, and we always talk about what that means. And I, I can tell you right now, I had to think about it myself, even as a player, what that means. I think first it starts off with communication. Um, how does the coach respond to the players? How do the players respond to the coaches? And can the game plan be executed as far as communication is concerned? The, the second thing is the common cause. Do you want to win at all? Do you want to win your conference title? Um, is, is, is that more important than the individual accolades? And lastly is how do you compete as a team? And when I think you look at both of these these Texas teams, uh, the Texas men for sure, at times they were like a roller coaster all over the place. At times showing all three of those, at times not showing any. And for Texas women, uh, they were up, they were on a stretch, John, where you were calling some of their games, where they were playing some of the best basketball in the Big 12. Eight of nine. But they just yeah. didn't play that way during the tournament. And here in their backyard, to get tripped up the way they did uh, against San Diego, it, it was unfortunate. But... Once again, it goes back to March Madness, and you have another team that is looking at it as an opportunity to take down a team like Texas, a six-ranked, uh, the six-seeded team, uh, and, and they did that. But March Madness is about chemistry, and the teams that win on both the men's and the women's side, watch for those three things, communication, a common cause, and then making sure that they compete together as a whole. Much more coming up on the tournament throughout the week uh, on the wake-up call from 6 to 9. One other thing about that Kentucky-Cornell game, Cornell is in Ithaca, which is about 45 miles outside of Syracuse. Mm. Should be a lot of red inside Great. that carrier dome. Hopefully it's a good crowd. Hey, if you missed any of the Tiger Woods interviews, he did two. One with the Golf Channel, one with ESPN Television. We got them both for you posted on our Wake Up Call page, so check it out. For Ahmad Brooks, I'm John Madani. This has been the Snooze at LonghorseStation.com.